So this has been one of the most requested videos on this channel. There has been hundreds of comments in the last few months requesting just what I'm about to show you right now. And this is going to be a game changer for your Enscape workflow as well as the quality of your renders. So make sure to stay around until the end of the video to get all the best tips and tricks that I'm about to show you right now. So what you see right here is basically a few angles of some of the renders that I'm going to break down today. And believe me, these renders have gotten a lot of attention in social media, hundreds of likes, hundreds of comments and all of that. And by the way, if you don't follow us on social media, make sure to check out at scale on July 3D, where I post a lot of exclusive content there and a lot of tips that you won't see on this YouTube channel. So make sure to check that out in the link in the description. All right. So with this scene right here, I want to first get started with the materials. The material setup is fairly simple, but before we get onto the technical stuff on the reflection, all of that, I just want to make sure you get an idea on what each material resembles and why each material was used in that case. Uh, I firstly want you to notice the color scheme that we used, and you can tell that there is a lot of uh, neutral colors, a lot of earth tone colors, which make up a very harmonious uh, feel on the render. And as you can see, there's two types of wood that we are using here, and they have different types of tint and they're different kind of wood. But something that you might not notice right away is that to make the contrast even bigger between these two types of woods, they have different orientation on the textures. So what I mean by that is that the grains on darker wood are vertical and those on the lighter wood are horizontal. And this makes even more contrast between the two. And let's not forget that the headboard of the bed plays a big role in catching the viewer's attention here. So if I'm assuming that you're a beginner in SketchUp and Enscape, I'm going to show you real quick on how you can change the orientation of the all your textures that you use in SketchUp. So for the sake of showcasing the orientation of texture to you, I just changed this surface's orientation into vertical, but we want to make it horizontal to match the whole theme of the scene. So to do that, if your object is in a group, you just isolate the part that you want to select in this case. I will want to select the texture right here. So to change the rotation of the texture, once I have selected, I will right click on my mouse and go to texture and position. So once this opens, I'm going to select the orange rotation icon and I will move my mouse on a 90 degrees angle, which will snap it on right away. So now, as you can see, I just changed the orientation of this texture. If there are other textures that are horizontal, you won't have to do this all one by one. Instead, what you can do is use the eyedropper tool with the Alt key on your keyboard, select it, and then you can apply it on any part that is vertical. So just right here. So if I change this to vertical, and then I use the eyedropper tool to copy the parameters of this texture. I will use the Alt key and then I will apply the material onto this surface. And as you can see, it's already flipped onto horizontal position. So let's say you've created the concept on how you're going to use your materials as well as the color scheme and everything else for your project. Now you want to make sure on where you can get and where you can source the materials that you're going to use. You have two options that are basically the go to options when selecting materials. And one of them is using the Enscape material library, which is located in the Enscape bar and is this one right here and it has almost 400 materials that you can use. And this is pretty good for basic materials like plaster and all of that, but you're kind of limited on the kind of materials that you can use on your scene. So instead, you can also use PBR materials, which are based in physics of the real world and are based on real world materials. I myself have a pack of 30 materials that I've selected myself and tested in the link in the description. And all of these materials are meant to be used in mostly interior scenes. So if you want to use the same materials that I use in my scene, you can find them in the link in the description in my website. So for example, this material right here, we can use the eyedropper tool to select it once again, and then we can open the Enscape material editor in our SketchUp tab. So what you can notice is that it has a color map, which basically gives the hue and the tint of the material that we're using as well as you can see the height map, which gives it depth. And in some cases you might need to use a bump map and in some cases you might need to use a normal map. But in our case, I chose to use a bump map. You also have the reflection 
uh, where you can add a roughness texture to give a reflection to make it more realistic. You don't always have to use a reflection map, but it's always nice because it can isolate which areas are more prone to reflection when used in real life instances. But if you don't have a reflection map, it's still fine because the Enscape roughness slider is quite good as well. And as you can see, the reflection of our material right here is changing. And honestly, if I didn't have a reflection map on these types of woods, I usually do anywhere between 30 to 50%. And remember, always with all the settings, not only material settings, but lighting settings and everything else, there's not a fixed parameter that you can use in all renders because every scene has a different composition as well as different materials, as well as different color scheme and all of that. So make sure to always use different types of parameters unless you're using PBR maps like I suggested before. So this is pretty much it when it comes to materials in this scene. It's pretty basic and also all of the rendering softwares have automated materials uh, so much that nowadays you just have to make sure that the material flow is harmonious and they have a nice combination between them and all of that and you don't have to worry a lot in terms of uh, the other aspects like the depth and reflection because they're already automated either way either you choose the Enscape material library which has maps already put into them or you can use PBR materials which you can download the maps from as well but the trickiest part on all interior scenes I believe is lighting and I proved that with a poll that I did on this channel and in the Instagram profile. So I'm going to go straight into that and I'm going to show you two different ways that we can use lighting in this scene. So when it comes to interior lighting, the trickiest part is to get soft shadows and just the right amount of contrast. I usually don't like to use the default Enscape Sun in our lighting settings when it comes to interior scenes and that's because it's just too harsh and it's just too much and instead I usually like to create a fake sun which will give me soft shadows as well as good color lighting as well as a good soft light color for our scene so as i'm showing you in our sketchup file you can tell that these light sources here mimic the sun and these ones here are used to balance the amount of light that is spread throughout the whole room and the difference between these ones with not only the intensity is that these ones have a color applied to it so they're warmer than the one that resembles the outside these lights right here don't have any color applied to them and that will make them give the mood as there is maybe a foggy weather outside and it's not too sunny because when it's too sunny uh, what happens is that the shadows will not be as soft and there will be much more contrast so let me see if i can showcase this to you right now so if i turn on the sun brightness to somewhere around 33% I guess. So as you can see, now that I've turned on the sun, you can see how harsh the shadows are and the sun is just coming in too strong. And it's just way more the dramatic than we would want it. I mean, it doesn't look bad, don't get me wrong, but it's not as ideal as I want the render to be. So instead, I just turn down the sun intensity all the way to 0% and just leave the fake light sources that we put in as our source of natural lighting. Also, one quick thing that you can notice is that I had the white background tick turned on, and that is just to have a simpler background because right here we don't see the outside. But in case you would see the outside through the window, you can always use HDRIs as they are a great resource on backgrounds as well as natural lighting sources. So let's see on the parameters that I did to create these light sources. So I'm going to select this one and then I'm going to go on to the Enscape Objects tab and I turn the beam angle all the way to 90 degrees and what this does is that it makes the shadows even softer because there's lights coming from even more directions and turning up the beam angle all the way to 90 degrees has an effect on making the shadows even softer because if the beam angle was more narrow there would be less angles from where the light will come in if that makes any sense. So if I turn it down you can see the difference a lot because now you have some weird shadows coming in over here and then there's some dark spots over here and over here and it's just not lit up as well as it should be. But when you turn it up all the way to 90 degrees you can see that the scene is coming to life much better. These lights right here also play a very important role on our render because they make the room warmer and what you can do is you can either leave them as default spotlights or you can load in an IES profile which will make it more realistic. So I get IS profiles from IS 
library.com there is plenty of them over there i've mentioned this website even in my earlier videos it's a great resource to get more natural lighting in your artificial lights if that makes sense in escape so once you have placed them uh, what i like to do is i put them everywhere on the surfaces that there is flooring and not on top of the bed because as you can see there's some depth in our modeling and maybe the light wouldn't bounce off as realistic as it should so to keep it safer i just put spotlights in the surfaces that were flat to load in is profiles once you have downloaded is profiles from the website that i mentioned earlier you can just open the objects tab and then click the load is profile icon and then you can find it from wherever you have gotten it from. You can just click load IS profile and then just load it up from whatever folder you saved your IS profile on. So as you can see, this scene doesn't have a lot of complicated things when it comes to lighting either. It's one of the simpler scenes in terms of lighting that I've done because there's only one main lighting direction that uh, you're getting the natural lighting from and is from the left side or the side that the window is open on right here one quick thing that you should also keep in mind is that these lights right here play the main role when it comes to the lighting in the scene and the spotlights that are inside the room are just supplementing what we have right here so if you're good at placing these uh, you should be pretty much good in all of your scenes because it's crucial to get the right amount of intensity on them as well as the right amount of distance from the windows or whatever opening that you have. And just to prove this to you, if I delete these lights right here, you can see that the whole scene is ruined and there's not much going on in this scene. What we can also see is that there's some LED strip lighting type of lights in the back of the headboard. And that is pretty simple. I mean, to do that, you can just go to the Enscape Objects tab. You can either use the line light option or you can do rectangular lighting like this and then just multiply it all the way through your segment or through your line and to create the effect that I did on this render. So in my opinion, I believe there are four main components when it comes to creating a realistic render. And I believe that is composition, materials, lighting, and 3D models that you use in your render. And the 3D models part is the trickiest part because Sketchup Warehouse doesn't always have the highest quality models to use in your rendering. But if you want to use the same 3D models that I'm using right here in this Sketchup file, you can get the whole Sketchup file set up for you with all the materials, all the lighting, all the 3D models, the composition and all of that in the link in the description. So make sure to check it out if you want to analyze the whole scene by yourself. So now that we got the three components out of the way, I think it's time to move on to the final one, which is composition. But honestly, I always do composition in the beginning of my workflow when I'm actually creating renders. But since it's more technical, I thought it would be better to leave it as the last component on breaking down this render. If we click the visual settings and go to output, you can see that there are a few presets in uh, Enscape. So you have the 1024 preset which is lower quality resolution and if you zoom in there won't be any detail and then you have the HD rendering which is a little bit higher quality but still not as good as the industry standards right now and i believe that the industry standards right now are full hd 1920 by 1080 or if you really want to take that extra step is if you go for the ultra hd which is basically 4k quality in my case, I didn't use neither of them and I went for a costume aspect ratio and I just clicked costume and I did 2000 by 2250 and this is great for Instagram purposes because uh, when you're scrolling you want to capture as much screen as possible on your viewer screen and this is exactly what this render did and this is one of the reasons why it performed that well in all the social media now this is not the only part of composition this is more the technical side of composition and not so much the creative part of it the creative part of composition would include something like storytelling or more so on composition rules which can be something like the guided lines or the centering and all of that in this case if we go to the second camera setting this is kind of a centering composition because as you can see, the main subject of our render is the center uh, vertically, but horizontally, the render is divided in three parts and the main subject of it is 
in the one thirds of the render so this is also called the rule of thirds so this is a combination between two rendering rules as i said the centering composition as well as the rule of thirds now each of these camera settings have different types of uh, fields of view so what the field of view does is basically it changes the angle on which the camera lens operates so i mean this wider field of view works well with this composition as well but the field of view that will work on a horizontal aspect ratio will not work on this vertical aspect ratio since we will need the render more zoomed in. So in this case, I will leave it at 35 degrees. I think this works fine. I believe it was lower in the original one, but this works fine as well. So this is nothing uh, complicated in terms of that. And then if we go to our second camera view, you can see that I used a different field of view and it's a lower one because this is right here is 26 degrees and the reason for this is that if we make it wider like the previous camera angle you can see that the focal point of this render or the main point of the render is not as emphasized as if the focal length of the camera view would be lower in that case i believe it was 26 but i guess 25 would work fine so if you lower it back to 25 you can see that there is this is much better than what we had previously with a larger field of view and then for the last one this is an angle that captures the side of the bed as well as the light coming in from the window and this is very important because since the light is coming from this side of the render you can see the depth and the irregularities of the bed and this is why the bed is such a good 3d model because it's not flat and it just gives the space a lot more sense of uh, realism with the irregularities that it has obviously with uh, the depth that it has right here as well as with the sheets and all of that now as you can see the scene was pretty simple in terms of composition as well as lighting and as well as materials so everything was pretty basic but when a good baseline combines with each component it creates results like this which i believe are very good in terms of what software are being used here if you've enjoyed the video and you learned anything from it please make sure to like the video as well as subscribe to the channel because i will be uploading a lot more breakdown videos like this for scenes that are more complicated and i will always be doing more advanced scenes in the future. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you on the next video.